Welcome everybody. Happy to have you here today. My name is Grayson Vandergrift. I'm the mayor of Midway, Kentucky, and we're out here in front of our government building, City Hall, but this used to be called and still is referred to as the Rao Building. It was built in the late 1870s. It served as a hotel, as a bakery, it's been restaurants, and it's been shops, and now it's where we hold our government offices. So follow me, come on in, we'll show you around. And as I mentioned before, we're inside the Rao Building now, Midway City Hall. Twice a month, our city council meets here, this long table behind me. But we also like to showcase a lot of our city's history, and this also doubles as a visitor center. So when the many visitors each day and each week and each month come into Midway, they oftentimes stop in here to grab a brochure, maybe ask Sonia, our assistant city clerk, some questions or some ideas about where to eat. And just to even use the restroom or just find general information, they a lot of times are enamored by this a trophy case to my left, which shows our one of our most prized possessions, our 1937 KHSAA championship. That's right, Midway, Kentucky has a state championship to its name. The Blue Jays won it back in 1937. It's our own version of Hoosier. So this is a wonderful building, big tall ceilings. The acoustics are really neat in here. There's exposed iron in the front. Uh, we've done some restoration work, but we've always preserved it right back to the way that it was intended to be. And it's really a treasure right here in Midway, Kentucky. Long before this was Midway City Hall, this was served as a bakery, this served as a restaurant, this served as shops. But upstairs behind me was also a hotel for a time. Now the staircase behind me is really cool. I'm going to make a dramatic exit here in a moment to go up there. But what's so amazing about this building is you can almost feel the history inside here. So we're going to get to see some more of this building as we go today, but it's so neat to me that where we now have our administrative functions, Midway City Hall, we can know that there were people that used to eat here, dine here, and even sleep here. So we have actually leased out this space where we are right now to the Midway Museum, Inc. And they kind of keep a lot of the city records, a lot of the history to display for people. And they've been using this little area and the windows that face the street as what they call pop-up history. They change the theme about once a month. They've been doing it more frequently in normal times, and they'll get back to that again. But it's a really great way for visitors to get to pop in, look through the window, and see what might be about black history one month in Midway. One month it might be about agricultural history in Midway. One month it'll be about our bourbon history in Midway. And another month it might be about something else. But it's been a great way to connect with visitors and locals because there's tons of history in Midway, as you're learning today. Speaking of that, why don't we pop across the street and talk to two of our expert local historians, Bill and Leslie Penn at Midway Historic Gift Store. Okay, I am Leslie Penn and this is my husband, Bill Penn. He's pretty much known as the local historian. Um, we moved to Midway in 1985 and we saw that downtown was pretty much deserted. There were very few shops downtown. And we had a keen interest in restoration of the downtown, a small downtown. Our building was built around 1880 by a Henry Russell. He was an Irishman and it was a saloon. And it was, of course, this building. They lived upstairs, he and his wife, and they had one daughter. And the daughter, um, Anna, lived to be 100 years old. And we do have some records on her and on their family. One of their descendants came to Midway one time and gave us all these pictures of them, the family and the old um, saloon. And it was really fascinating. It was a saloon until, um, well, around 1915, Mr. Russell left town and it was bought by the Sons and Daughters of Relief and they ran it upstairs, the Sons and Daughters of Relief met upstairs and downstairs they rented it for a saloon. Okay, when you first walk into the building, of course there used to be a saloon along here, which wasn't here when we bought the building. 25 years ago. 
but there was red shag carpet in here, which we had to take up. And we had to do a lot of painting. And then this was all plastered over the arch. We took the plaster off because it had cracked and found this underneath and we liked this even more. So how can you beat that? <laughs> okay, this is our upstairs of our um, store. And it took a little bit longer to settle in. But this room is pretty much for people who love Kentucky history. My husband loves Kentucky history, so he had to have this room, especially for him <laughs> and all his friends, and they come up here, and it's just been a delight for him. We have like um, a section for just general Kentucky history. We have Midway history. We have Woodford County. We have uh, Kentucky authors. We have horse books, we have train books, and it's um, just a delight for people who love to research in history. We've been focusing on Midway's buildings and architecture, but uh, Midway's history really is tied around other events, the main one being uh, the railroad. During the Civil War, there were three events here in Midway that are mentioned in most history books, at least mentioned. And the first one is uh, on John Hunt Morgan's first Kentucky raid in 1862. He stopped here. Uh, he had around 800 men with him. but. What happened on here at Midway was that he, he took over the uh, telegraph and uh, Morgan had a telegraph operator send false messages to Frankfurt and Lexington, which said he had a lot more men than he did and said he and threw them off, said he was going in some other direction. That incident is mentioned in all of the John Hunt Morgan biographies. And then later in the war, uh, Confederate guerrillas came here twice to steal uh, thoroughbred horses out on the one of the horse farms. We're on two of the horse farms. One was Woodburn and the other one was uh, Nantura Farm. On the second raid, they ended up killing Adam Harper Jr. And as a result of that, the Union General Burbridge, as a reprisal, had four Confederate prisoners brought here to Midway and they were executed. And uh, they were buried now in the Midway Cemetery. We've heard the more famous stories of Midway's history but there are a lot that haven't been shared yet. And we're going to hear from Milan Bush and her work with the Honoring Black Stories in Midway. Hi, I'm Milan Bush. I am the founder of uh, Honoring Black Stories here in Midway, Kentucky, celebrating the lives of black people yesterday, tomorrow, today, and forever. We started Honoring Black Stories as a way to change the narrative and hoping bringing the black community not just together but embracing a whole community and moving forward. On June 19th, Mayor Grayson declared Juneteenth a holiday, starting in essence a event that led to honoring black stories. What we ended up doing is doing some research, digging a little deeper and finding some true amazing history and stories to tell. What we're doing now is offering tours, educational programs, and community events to bring our community back together as a whole, in essence, bringing honoring black stories into the forefront, allowing people to understand history from an aspect of today and embracing it for tomorrow and in the future. So right now we're going to talk about some stories that we've covered for honoring black stories. One of those stories that we covered was the Kitchen Orchestra Band, which is something that a young teacher started, Katherine Johnson, and what she did was basically have kids come together with pots and pans and create a band. 
And one of those banners is featured today, which is why I'm talking about it. So what we ended up doing is having history that included um, everyday people and, and making that important to ensure that people understand that everyday people make a difference in the community and uplifting them. So we're at Facebook on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, and our website is Honoring Black Stories. You can find us all there, check us out, come and support us. We've seen so many negative um, aspects of stories of black people. We wanted to change and figure out what is the good things that we see and such things as buildings that um, are here that served so many years ago to people like me of color that had businesses that served as meeting places. And so one of these buildings still exists today. It is here, right here in Midway. And there were, we had many efforts to save this building. And I'm so excited for the people that supported us in doing so. And now we have our building owner that I would love to introduce you guys to. His name is Ness Almendari, and he will tell you more about this wonderful building. My first name is Nazar. My last name is Alamdari, A-L-A-M-D-A-R-I. Everybody knows me as Ness. Uh, I'm the property owner of 116 East Main Street, Midway, Kentucky. I have owned many, many historic buildings in uh, Old Louisville, Cincinnati, and many in Lexington. I have never seen any property, any structure, uh, the way it was deteriorated. It was totally ignored for past, I would say, 70 to 60 years, sadly. Extremely geniusly built, very, very smartly built, but unfortunately, they let it go down. Once this type of structure starts the deterioration, nails come loose, nails start rusting, the building starts changing shape. I came to Midway through a good friend of mine who I always looked at my, a sister that I never had, Miss Helen Wrench. Uh, Miss Helen Wrench is daughter of Dr. Roach. Uh, after we had, we were at Dr. Roche's uh, home, a parishal farm, Dr. Roche actually walked me here, stood right there by today's city hall, and showed me the clock tower building. He said, uh, Ness, look at that building. Since it caught on fire, the whole downtown became a ghost town. He looked at me dead straight into my eyes. He said, I want you to go in there, purchase the property, and do something with it. As you see, this building, 140 East Main Street uh, in Midway, uh, after the fire, after I purchased it, I went inside and took a closer look. Uh, the funny thing, when I managed to open the side door on North Grad Street, I went inside, I noticed there were like four or five steps totally gone on the semi-round staircase. I noticed the previous tenant in that building, uh, the building was rented to a bank. The bank built a vault with railroad tracks in there also. In order for them to make the vault so high, they had to remove the steps to get what they want. So luckily, some smart person saved the steps in there. Not the rise, but the tread. All the treads were in there. When I found them, I felt like somebody gave me a check of $1 million. I was very excited. The units upstairs were extremely in bad shape, very bad shape and uh, I did some creative things on the baseboard on the second floor as well as first floor storefront. I remember when I was little I looked at my grandfather's uh, house. I took a picture in my head with some of the things I remembered from my grandfather's house which was almost under 600 years old building. I 
Remember at the bottom of the walls where it meets the floor, the plaster were fake enough, you could see up and down, hill like roll and hill like design on it. So as soon as I saw that, it was a deja vu, took me totally back to my grandparents' house. And I applied the same on, the, on this building also. Thanks for coming. Uh, uh, I hope I get to see every single one of you again. Uh, hopefully next time it will be warmer, uh, no more masks and we all can have something to eat, uh, some refreshments with Kentucky bourbon in Little Manhattan and, uh, and enjoy our being in beautiful Kentucky. Thank you.